So today's lesson is going to be on factoring trinomials in standard form. So this time we're looking at standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. But we want to look at problems where your a term, your leading coefficient, is greater than 1. So if we're looking at this here, we have 8x squared plus 10x minus 3. And now if we think about our undoing of multiplication, undoing of foiling, that is what we have to think about when we're finding the factors. So if we're thinking about, all right, well, which factors did we multiply to get an 8x squared here first? What are factors of 8? 4 and 2. So we have 4x and 2x here. Or we could have 8x and x. So we have options here for our first term. Because when we use the FOIL method and multiply our first terms, remember we need to get that first term there, 8x squared. So we fulfilled that by putting in those spots in the factors. Now let's look at our last term. We have negative 3. So factors of 3, we know are 1 and 3. So if we put 1 here and 3 here, I can make this a plus and this a minus. I could make, or I could make that a minus and this a plus. Because our last terms, when they multiply, they need to get us negative 3. But when our first terms multiply, they have to get us 8x squared. And now here, if we had plus 1, minus 3, we also have 8x. We could also say 8x minus 1 or, uh, sorry, x plus 3. So when our last terms multiply, they get us negative 3. And then when our first terms multiply, they should get us 8x squared. So we can do this, but notice how we have four different options. And sometimes these options will get there'll be more and more options once these numbers start getting bigger and bigger. So there has to be an easier way. So we're going to do a strategy called the AC method. And let's start with what we can do first to see if, a, an, if an expression can factor. So some strategies we want to look at first. If we multiply our A term by the C term, let's see, 8x squared plus 10x minus 3. So if we multiply our a term by our c term, we get negative 24. And so after we did that, we need to ask ourselves, are there factors of negative 24 of this number that add up to the middle term? So if you think of factors of negative 24 that add up to 10, I can say mm, positive 12 and negative 2, those add up to 10. So we do have factors. So if our answer is yes, then it can factor. But let's say our answer is no. Then we cannot factor this expression and we can call it prime. So these are some strategies we can use to see if an expression can factor. Because going back to this first slide, notice how there are many options here. And maybe we can go through all of the options and none of them will, will work. And that's wasting a lot of time. So in order to be efficient, we can use this test on every single example to see whether or not this is a true, uh, this is a, we can answer this yes and see whether it can factor or no, it cannot factor. So this is going to be the first step in our AC method. So our first step is to multiply the A term by the C term. So here's our A times the C term. This is the same example. And I got negative 24. So we need to think of factors of negative 24 that add up to the middle term, the B term, which is 10. And we said before this was 12 and negative 2. So number 3 in our steps here, I say to split up the middle term into these two factors. So you're probably at, like wondering, all right, well, what does that mean? So here we go. If we have... 12 and negative 2, what we're doing is splitting this up. So we have 12x and negative 2x. 
And what we want to do is rewrite the problem as 8x squared plus 12x minus 2x minus 3. So notice how this is a different problem now. But if we combine these middle terms, we get to 10x. So now what we're going to do is continue with factoring. But notice how we have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, and we can fat try to factor by grouping. So if we do that, we're going to group. Okay. So in the first group, what is our GCF? Say 4x, and we're left with 2x plus 3. So now we want this next factor to be 2x plus 3, but there's a minus here. So we can factor out a negative 1 and have a 2x plus 3 there. And now we have 2x plus 3 in both of these terms, so we can factor out our GCF with our grouping. And now we've gotten to our factors. So if we multiplied and re and remultiplied, multiplied our first terms, outer terms, inner terms, and last terms, we're going to get back to the original problem. So some of us may be asking or thinking, all right, well, you wrote down in this problem this 12x here and this 2x there. But what if we switched them? So let's do this problem by switching them. So a times my c term, negative 24. We can split this middle term up. So we have 8x squared, rewriting our first term, uh, minus 2x plus 12x minus 3. Because notice how the negative 2x and the 12x, they add up to this middle term, this 10. So, now when we use the GCF and use grouping, we can factor out a 2x and be left with 4x minus 1. And here we could factor out a 3 and be left with 4x minus 1 here. So our GCF in this problem is 4x minus 1. 2x plus 3 are the factors. So if we're comparing our work, we have 4x plus 1 ended up being the GCF in our grouping. But in the previous problem, notice 2x plus 3 ended up being the GCF when we grouped. So either way you place these factors, you will end up getting the same factors at the end. But notice my 2x plus 3, 4x plus 1, 4x minus 1, was in this particular order, whereas down below, 4x minus 1 and then times 2x plus 3 ended up being that order. So what we're doing is rewriting this problem so it can become the grouping method. So let's look at this example. So our first step, it's called the AC method. So we're multiplying our A term by our C term. And what do we get when we multiply our a term by our c term? We get 6. So now we want to think, what are factors of 6 that add up to 5? And my answer is 2 and 3, right? 2 plus 3 gives us 5. So we're going to split up this middle term. We're still going to write our first term. We're rewriting the middle term as a sum, okay, because it's 2x and 3x gives us the 5x, so it's an equivalent expression. We're not changing anything from this expression. We're just rewriting it in a different form. And then we have four terms and we can group. So what's the GCF in the first group? x. And we already have a 3x plus 2, so our GCF is 1. And now we could factor out that main GCF, 3x plus 2, and be left with x plus 1. So it's not bad, but it's a method that you have to keep practicing 
and a method that you have to kind of go through. And it's okay to have these rules up in front of you as you go through, or even just looking through this example a few times, or looking through the examples that we've done to kind of get used to the methods, but it's gonna come with repetition. Practicing one or two of these examples is not going to make you um, an expert at this. So you have to make sure that you're going through and practicing again and again, because that repetition will be um, good for you in the long run. So let's do this example now. Okay, so the AC method, what do we do first? So multiply your A term by your C term. And I have a negative seven here, so our product is a negative 42. So what are factors of negative 42 that add up to negative 41? So negative 42 and positive one. So we're going to split up the middle term. I'm going to keep our first term. And then I'm going to say minus 42x plus 1x, or you can say plus x, and then keep our last term. Now we have four terms, and we can group. So in the first pair, in the first group, what's our GCF? So x minus 7 is left, and then plus 1, and then x minus 7. So from here, we're factoring out an x minus 7 in our GCF, and then we have 6x plus 1. So from there, we have finished factoring. So notice in looking at this problem, we have many different factors of 7 that we could, or factors of 6 we could use, and the signs are different. So keeping in mind, this AC method can be useful and helpful as we go through. So why don't you press pause and try this next example on your own, and then hit play again once you've finished, and I will uh, have the solutions out for you. So going through this particular problem, 6 times 2 is 12, factors of 12 that add up to 7. I have our 4 and 3, so we're going to split this 7x up, so we have 6x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 2, and you could have switched those again, right? We, we looked at that in that first example, but now when we group here, we have to factor out a 2x, so we're left with 3x plus 2, and then notice how we already have 3x plus 2, so I'm going to put a 1 there and keep our 3x plus 2 so that when we factor the 3x plus 2 out, we know that there is a 1 left. Okay. So this is the AC method. So make sure that you're pra practicing with this method. And it would be perfectly fine for you to keep these rules up with you as you go through the example and um, keep looking back at this video if you need more guidance.